Hey everybody, today we are going to talk about the uh, recent update where Turkey has proposed, or I don't know, it may be more than a proposal, to station 3,000 troops in Qatar. Um, it's a pretty significant development in the world. Um, now, Qatar is a country that is um, on the Persian Gulf. Um, it's a small country, very wealthy country, and um, more than anything, it's a... Um, part of the uh, GCC, the Gulf Cooperation Council. I may or may not have that acronym right. But anyway, it's basically like the um, the NATO of the um, uh, Arab, the Gulf Arab world. Um, Saudi Arabia, of course, is kind of the big guy there. Um, you know, Qatar, Oman, um, United Arab Emirates, so forth. And it's a, a block that... Um, they cooperate together militarily, politically, and um, economically more than anything. And um, now, anyway, when we say a country is going to station troops overseas, um, from the American perspective, we don't really think about that too much um, because that's what we do. Um, you know, we have uh, troops everywhere, and you know, you might say, well, you know, big deal, my cousin Jimmy's stationed in Germany right now, or. You know, Uncle Frank spent 10 years in Japan or whatever. You yourself spent, you know, what, time in Guantanamo, you know, just wherever. Um, we have military all around the world. Most countries don't. Um, a few of the old uh, ex-colonial militaries have some people here and there. Um, UK, France, Netherlands, so forth. Um, but now Turkey... Is interesting because Turkey is um, a lot of people might not realize it but one of the world's biggest military powers um, they they are very serious about it um, they have a very large military they have the second largest military in NATO actually so that means you know it's bigger than Germany Italy uh, Great Britain whatever um, only second to us a distant second but you know it's still significant um, they have a very strong military culture. Um, the military is very respected in Turkish culture. Um, they, they really do get like, a lot of their best and brightest go into the officer corps because um, it's a very respectable thing to do there, just like it is in the United States. Um, a lot of countries don't quite have that same reverence for their military um, like the United States and Turkey does. But anyway, with the serious of military and capable modern uh, military and all that, Turkey at this point, um, they don't have a huge overseas presence. They do take part in um, UN peacekeeping things uh, quite often, which a lot of countries do, and that's about, um, about the only time most countries get their militaries overseas, really. But they do have a, a sizable presence there in their... Um, their half of Cyprus, um, North Cyprus, I believe it is, um, that's like de facto theirs. Um, and recently they've crossed into Iraq and, you know, they've got their little hands in the Iraq and Syria and so forth, um, and have for quite some time. But, um, most of the, like the Turkish military's deployments, um, really have been within Turkey's own borders, um, dealing with the Kurdish problem there, which is a whole another ball of wax that would deserve hours and hours of talking about. But um, anyway, this development is significant for a couple of reasons. Um, one, I think um, it really shows Turkey kind of coming up in the world as um, not a superpower, but um, uh, like a second tier power if that makes sense um, I mean that sounds kind of um, kind of smarmy or smug to say but I mean it with like the most respect possible um, that you know they're not a United States Russia or China but um, they're kind of right there below us they really um, have a lot more pull in the world I think than we think and uh, potential to have pull in the world um, but anyway uh, this it's pretty big development um, now, 3,000 troops doesn't sound like a lot, but the way I understand it is it's going to be um, special forces and um, people 
Oh, and some air assets and um, kind of logistical um, set up there, which tells me that Turkey wants the ability to be able to, you know, operate um, as far as like conduct a strike or whatever in the Persian Gulf. And it also kind of tells me that Turkey wants the ability to be able to uh, be able to amass uh, troops in the Gulf region, which uh, to me that kind of kind of telling. Um, now, the way the world's going, um, you know, I, I don't want to say like you know the United States is like on a thread or Europe's on a thread, but. Um, there is a big possibility that the United States could take a tumble in the world, and there's uh, just as big of a possibility that the European Union can kind of um, uh, fall apart, um, you know, disintegrate or whatever. And um, now, if Turkey's strong, Turkey stands a chance of being um, kind of there to pick up some of the pieces in the Middle East and maybe even Eastern Europe. Um, they would have to do world's greatest PR campaign to get to Eastern Europe via um, soft power, but um, they're pretty well respected in the Middle East these days. Um, they have close relationships with Saudi Arabia right now, and um, they also they also kind of have a uh, mutual enemy in Iran. Um, Turkey doesn't really quite have the same kind of hard on for Iran as Saudi Arabia and the Gulf states, but um, they still would be in the event of the United States kind of falling from the world stage. The Middle East would probably end up being a a function uh, like who controls the Middle East would be determined between Iran and Turkey, and now with Turkey cooperating with these Gulf states um, that really would balance the fi change the balance of power a lot more in the Turkey's favor um, should Iran and Turkey ever butt heads over who's going to control the Middle East. Um, now, sure, we all know there's a ton of oil in the Middle East. Um, there's a lot of uh, cultural significance um, in Saudi Arabia uh, for people, you know, of the uh, Islamic faith. Um, you would be quite the feather in your cap to, um, you know, own Mecca or run it, so forth, um, birthplace of the prophet, and all that. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I just really see this as an example of Turkey um, really building up to um, be more of a power in the world as we're going forward. Uh, as far as. Uh, Qatar goes, um, I don't think the issue is necessarily the country of Qatar that Turkey necessarily like, really wanted. I just think that's where the real estate was available. Um, if they could have pulled it off you know, in Saudi Arabia, or um, which they, they couldn't, um, or United Arab Emirates, or just I mean anywhere down there, um, they would have picked there. But just more of an issue of having that presence um, there in the Gulf. And um, even if right now it's just a token presence, but the ability to be able to project Turkish power down there. Um, and then now Saudi Arabia and Iran, um, they've got their differences. And um, that is something that in the future could go hot. Um, right now, the United States, we kind of uh, keep the peace in there um, via the petrodollar agreement, which is... Um, Long story short, an agreement we made with the Saudi Arabians that they would sell their oil in dollars and in turn kick the profits back to us um, in the form of buying bonds, um, holding U.S. dollars, uh, buying American weapons and so forth. And in turn, we would guarantee the security of the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And we've done a pretty good job of that so far. Um, so in the first Gulf War, um, Saddam looked like he was going to come um, into Saudi Arabia and um, you know we and everybody else in the world was like no that's not going to happen um, but should that agreement ever fall through um, Saudi Arabia is going to need to cover 
cover her own ass. And um, there have been actually been a lot of tensions between the United States and Saudi Arabia um, over the past five years or so. And um, I, it's kind of interesting because, like, here in the United States, um, sometimes we'll say things like, well, you know, we won't deal with these people, but, um, you know, we're best friends with these people that, um, you know, have no regard of gay rights. They behead people. They, you know, hate women, blah, 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 blah. But um, we treat them as friends, and these people are enemies. So, yeah, there is definitely that double standard. Um, so, I, you know, that friendship or whatever between the United States and Saudi Arabia is um, very tenuous, I would say. And now, right now... Um, Saudi Arabia and Iran are kind of having a proxy war there in Yemen on Saudi Arabia's border, and Saudi Arabia is getting sucked into that. Um, I think it's toned down a little bit as of recent, but um, it's still a way where the Iranians and Saudis are kind of butting at each other's heads. And um, I suppose also in Syria, or maybe even more so in Syria, you could point to some of the different factions and call that a proxy war between um, the Gulf Arab interest and um, Iranian interest and, and Turkish interest button up there. Um, and uh, so, I mean, basically all these people kind of have it out for Iran, um, you know, for good reason or, or not. Um, you know, that's kind of a hard judgment to make. Um, but I, I don't know. I just see this as kind of significant development as the way the world is has been forming it's a reaction the the per, um the turkish presence there in the gulf is kind of a reaction to the way the world has been setting up and um sides are being formed and um there there's tangible actions on these sides um i don't know it'd be kind of interesting to see if um russia reacts russia act they have um their state-run media is kind of like, um, I don't know, downplaying um, Turkish involvement in this region right now. Um, as they, They've been really hard on Turkey, of course, naturally, because of the downing of the plane. But um, it will be interesting to see what Iran's reaction, or maybe even Russia's reaction, to a Turkish presence right there would be. Um, because no one's, you know, nobody's stupid. You know, no one thinks that Turkey's just down there to because they pointed a finger on the map and oh, oh look Qatar. You know, um, they just they want to be positioned right there um, to be able to pick up the pieces should they fall in the Middle East. That's what I think. Um, as far as Eastern Europe goes and Turkey's um, ability to kind of get back in there. Um, Something that hasn't been seen in a uh, hundred and a half years or two hundred years or something, but um, I don't know. It, it is possible if um, you start to see some of these EU periphery nations um, splitting away from the EU. You know, Bulgaria, Romania. Um, I, I don't think Greece would have it, um, even though they would kind of split away. Um, I don't know, you could, you, I don't know, might be able to see Turkish soft power going that way, but the Turkish hard power is definitely going into this region. Um, there's also a lot of talk in um, the world about Turkey's role in NATO, and yeah, the general consensus on the ground level is that they don't belong. Um, kind of hard to say about that. They could not belong. Um, to me, they're... Uh, participation in NATO I'm just more of a Cold War function but <clears throat> then again the, you know the Russian bear is growling at the door again um, after shooting down that plane and uh, a lot of the bad blood that's happened in the past month or so um, could be sitting in Moscow uh, thinking up plans to turn Istanbul back into Constantinople who knows um, Turkey might might be a little worried about that and might uh, cozy up a little bit more to NATO and um, kind of toe the NATO NATO line. I don't know. Who knows? But anyway, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out. That's just kind of my um, off-the-cuff um, interpretation of these events. And, uh, of course, I will continue to follow them. Thanks for watching.